Hi everybody, it's Lisa again and in this hour we are going to be reading an article from Wired.com. Wired.com is a magazine actually, it's the online version of the Wired magazine which does articles on technology and science and life and um, business culture and things like that. So today I chose an article which is uh, um, going to be about a photography exhibit actually and desk jobs and things and I put the article link there but I'm actually going to be doing the reading on a, a Google Doc so I'll put that up there in just a minute. Hi Antonio, how are you doing? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Where are you from Antonio? I'm from Italy and this is the first time I joined uh, Verblink. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Uh, how did you hear about Verblink? Um, searching in internet. Okay, great. Wonderful. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be uh, explaining how it works here in just a minute. Uh, you are in here in the res reservation, so you get to make sure that you're here. You came in early. Um, what happens in about one minute or less is that the join class button will appear and people can start clicking on that and when they do they they will join us here in the Google Hangout and we'll see all their pictures come up here below and then we're okay. going to be doing a reading so this is um, intermediate to advanced level reading and discussion it looks like you like to do reading. I see a lot of books in the background there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my room. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh, do you read in English also? Do you have books in English? Yeah, also. Okay. Uh, but I've been studying German and okay. Russian okay. Oh, wow. Um, wow. in the last year, and so I need wow. to practice again with English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What um, Are you studying German and Russian for a certain reason or just because you enjoy it? I I'm studying foreign languages in at the university. I see. Okay, okay great. Wonderful. <laughs> das ist gut. Sehr gut. <laughs> Danke. <laughs> good. Bitte. Okay. All right. So, it looks like people are coming in. I just want to say hi everybody. Hi Tan and Maria. Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kubra, how are you today? And Yada's in the chat. Hi Yada. And Julissa, hi there again. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. And uh, Hazel, hi there, Hazel. Christoph's back. And Ant Antonina, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, great. You guys ready to do some reading? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, the. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, clicked yet on the <laughs> wired link. <laughs> that I put up there, but this is the pictures. So here's some some of the pictures. We can just go through it, and I'm going to put them in the screen share so that other people who are just going to listen to this uh, class will uh, be able to see. You can also open the link if you're listening. Uh, uh, Antonina, you're also learning uh, German and Russian too. Wow, you guys are um, ambitious, huh? <laughs> That's great. I'm studying my French and my and my Spanish. I haven't yet. Uh, well, I did join one Verbling Spanish class, uh, but I don't usually have enough time to really go in for the full class. But I sometimes watch Paulino or other Carlos or other teachers, uh, so it's pretty fun. So I think in the future Verbling will have more languages, so it'll be a good resource for people who are learning other languages as well, not just English. Okay, so here we'll just take a look at some of these pictures. Uh, here's this guy, and uh, what the article is about is his book that he has uh, created, and it's a book of photography. And he basically went around the world taking pictures of people at work um, in what we call desk jobs. Jobs where you basically sit at your desk all day and work. Um, so it might be, it looks like that lady is in her house or a bedroom. Uh, some people are in an office space. Some people are in all different kinds of um, areas. She's sitting on a ball there. <laughs> different kinds of chairs, different kinds of decorations. And um, 
So in the article, we're just going to read uh, what a little bit about it. Now this looks like a. So anybody here in the Google chat uh, before we start? How many people sit at their desk all day and work? Anybody? Yeah. Joe, yeah. well, Maria, yes. How many hours a day do you spend working at your desk, do you think? At least eight. <laughs> wow, at least eight. Do you look like that sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Falling asleep? <laughs> but I, know, I don't take a nap. <laughs> okay, good nap. Okay. No. All right. Good. Tan, how many hours do you spend at the computer a day? I don't know. One, two, four. Mm. Take a guess. Uh, from three to four hours. Three to four. Yep. Julissa, how about you? Do you, what kind of a job do you have? Do you have a desk job? Yes. Well, now this is part of my practice or internship. Uh -huh. And but yes, for, we have some periods. For example, uh, I have some times that I have to work in the office. But for example, the the past week I had to travel to the to the jungle to do the research to get some information. So oh. that was yeah, wow. that was very interesting. And that's what I like to be outside, getting information information from the people, uh, yeah. making interviews or focus groups. And oh. yes, that is outside the the office. But tomorrow I have to go again to the office from, I start from 10 to 5 p.m. And yes, that's basically in front of the computer, uh, passing the information, yes. Yeah. Just working on, do you work on reports and things? Or what kind of information do you it's work for with? A, a project. Uh, this is a nutritional project. Oh, okay. And yeah, I'm supporting the, the communication area. We are going to create some messages, like maybe we are going to make radio, radio spots, uh -huh. adver advertisements yep. for the yeah uh, for the mothers to change their habits uh, okay. to give a, be a better nutrition to their kids. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. And Hazel, <clears throat> do you have a job where you sit at a desk? No, no. <laughs> what do you uh, do? Uh, I'm a teacher, I'm a math teacher, only okay. um, at home about two, three hours. I, uh -huh. um, I try not to, uh, to stay, uh, not too many hours on the computer, but usually I end up staying about two <laughs> or three hours. <laughs> yeah, especially if you do some burbling classes, huh? <laughs> yes. Time, time, we say uh, time flies when you're having Indeed. fun. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah, it goes by very quickly. That's why it's dangerous for me if I start a verbling Spanish class or something because then I won't ever get up from the computer. I'll just keep going and doing different classes and, and learning things and talking to people. <laughs> yes, indeed. Imad, how about you? How many hours a day are you spending uh, at your desk? You would better ask me how, how many times uh, I spend uh, away from my computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how much time do you spend away from your computer? <laughs> Actually, I can't count it because it's nothing. It's maybe one or two hours a day, I think. <laughs> or just for sleeping. <laughs> do you sleep on your job, computer? Even. <laughs> yeah, I got on my computer and put it in my room. <laughs> you know. <laughs> even, even in my job, I. I really depend on my computer, even on my job. Uh, yeah. When I'm repairing something, I'm repairing device, for example, uh -huh. there's a special kit that connect this device to the computer to make inspection or scan of that. Oh, uh -huh. but, and we have also the data sheet that uh, explain everything, and we work on the computer every day. So my job, my office, that it was always like conference. If you came in the class, you, the, in the, the office, you found everyone is standing uh, or sitting in front of his computer screen and making some uh, some computer stuff. So, yeah, we used to be like computer alcoholic people. Yeah. I, I It's kind of amazing. Like, what did we do before computers? Like, what kind of jobs did people have, <laughs> you know? It just... Uh... Yeah, it was... I think it was... Uh, it, it was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, Christoph, 
Do you spend a lot of time at a desk in front of a computer? Yes, I do. How many hours per day? Uh, uh, so it depends because uh, on the day, days week I I work in a company, so uh -huh. I'm a computer developer. So you can imagine. Uh, yes, I see. <laughs> yeah. You what do you develop? Software programs or websites yeah. or? Okay. Yeah, soft, uh, software development. Okay. Blanca, how about you? What uh, do you work at a desk? Yes, I spend about uh, eight hours a day in front of the desk, but I also do some other interesting things, so it's not boring at all. Oh, okay. Do you get up and go do something else besides working at the computer, or what? Yes. Most of the times I have to use the computer, the internet connection, but I spend time with, you know, I, I was in high school with my teenagers. So oh, uh-huh. Going with them, talk to them. And yeah. Going to the cafeteria and have some coffee. I don't know. Very yeah. funny. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Antonio, h how many hours a day do you spend at at your computer, at your desk, studying, working? Uh, I spend many hours in front of the computer. <laughs> uh, four or five hours uh, per day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Working or studying or just uh, playing games. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody gone outside yet today? <laughs> yes. No. I was jogging. I was jogging like two kilometers. Oh, you were jogging. Okay. Antonio. Maybe I take my computer. I take my computer for a ride around the house. <laughs> you take your computer for a walk. <laughs> I, I, I took my iPhone. I went. I went jogging around. Well, I went walking around the track, and I had my iPhone. I was listening to a French podcast. So, <laughs> yes. Have they started with French classes and verbling? Yeah. No, not no. yet. Not yet. Antonina, did you uh, do you work at a desk? Uh, yes, uh, but well, not really. Uh, my job requires a lot of. Uh, moving around the city but uh, the weather is so bad right now so sometimes I just look outside the window and think I'd rather stay in the office for the next eight hours <laughs> yeah. where it's nice and warm well if it's nice and warm then I go and work outside yeah no but I mean if it's warm in the office then you'll just stay in the office yes yes w where do you live Antonina I live in Russia, in St. Petersburg, oh. uh, and uh, actually we have some statistics that there's only around 60 sunny days in a year. Wow. And all other times it's cloudy or rainy. And it's pretty horrible right now. Yeah. Is there a but lot it's of... by, by the coast, isn't it? On... Well... In the north. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> call it a coast. No. On the north. You have a river that goes through there, huh? Yes. I'm just trying to, yeah. <laughs> trying to find it. Oh, oh, it's near Finland. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem too far away from the coast, but maybe not that close. Hard to see. Not too far away from you, Maria. <laughs> uh, I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do some reading. I just wanted to show you those pictures and like get into the mindset of what we are going to be talking about. Um, and I gave it to you guys in the document, and now it should be um, available for everybody to open and look at. So it looks like you guys are there. All right. <clears throat> so this is how we do the reading class. I'm going to highlight some parts and then I'm going to read and then I'll ask uh, one of you guys to read what I just read. So the first part is all you have to do is listen and follow along. If you're not sure of what a word means you can just ask me. Um, sometimes I'll pick out some words that I think might uh, be a little bit more difficult and tell you those and then after we finish reading it we will have a discussion about it and you guys can talk about your own personal experiences and what comes up for you when you read about this and that type of thing. Okay? 
So here we go. It's called You Are Not a Unique Snowflake. Desk jobs suck everywhere. <laughs> okay. So I guess we should go over the first one. What does it mean to suck? What does it mean to have the desk job suck? It's bad or boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unpleasant anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boring. <clears throat> yeah, so anytime you hear, I don't know if they use that uh, phrase in England or elsewhere, but it's very popular in the United States to say that something sucks. You can say this: my job sucks, or that car sucks, or the weather sucks, or whatever. <laughs> um, is it is it formal way? No. Is it formal way? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's very, very it's informal. Very informal. Slang. Formal. Very informal. Very slang. Uh, mostly, you hear kids using that. You wouldn't say that to your boss, for example, uh, unless your boss was like your best friend or something like that. Uh, Usually, um, it's another way to say this is very, um, like the weather is miserable, you could say, or you could say the weather sucks. <laughs> so you would say miserable to, in a more, that would be a more form formal way of saying it. You know, the, the weather is miserable, the weather is um, nasty outside, but if you say it sucks, it just means that you think it's bad and you don't like it at all. What about unique snowflake? I've never heard oh, that. Oh, okay. In so, have you heard of the idea snow. that uh, a, every snowflake is unique or different? Okay. You, you are not. <laughs> You're not okay. a unique snowflake. So, mm -hmm. so what do you think he's trying to tell you in this title? It's very common. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're not you're not the only one who has a sucky desk job is what he's saying <laughs> basically <Yeah. laughs> that everywhere around the world uh, people experience this uh, way of working these days okay all right so you are not a unique snowflake desk job jobs suck everywhere okay when Lewis or Louis or Lewis Lewis Quell a photographer in the UK worked in an office at the age of 19 he was not a fan. It was the most tedious job in the world for me, says Quayle, who analyzed teachers' pay increments in the offices of Kingston Council in Surrey, UK. It required just enough brain power that you couldn't switch off. It was a slow torture. Okay, Antonina, will you read all that part that I just read? Mm -hmm. You are not a unique snowflake. Desk jobs suck everywhere. When Louis Qual, a photographer in the UK, worked in an office at the age of 18, he was not a fan. It was the most tedious job in the world for me, says Quell, who analyzed teachers' pay increments in the offices of Kingston Council in Surrey, UK. It required just enough brain power that you couldn't switch off. It was a slow torture. Thanks. Okay, since 2006, Quail has photographed offices in Russia, South Africa, Germany, the US, the UK, Cambodia, United Arab Emirates, Santo Domingo, and China. Municipal departments, call centers, financial brokers, and Commodities traders all feature in Quail's series desk job. Okay, Antonio. Yeah, since 2006, Quail has photographed offices in Russia, South Africa, Germany, the U.S., the U.K., Cambodia, United Arab Emirates, Santo Domingo, and China. Municipal departments, call centers, financial brokers, and commodities traders all feature in quail series desk job okay it's a topic that's been on the tech world's mind since Marisa Meyer CEO of Yahoo recently beckoned all work from home Yahoo employees back to the company offices to become the absolute best place to work wrote Meyer communication and colla collaboration will be important so we need to be working side by side. Okay, Let's see that part in it. Blanca, read that. Yes. It's a topic that's been on the teach world's mind since Marisa Mayer, CEO of Yahoo, recently back on all work 
work from home Yahoo employees back to the company's offices to become the absolute best place to work, broad mayor, communication and collaboration will be important, so we need to be working side by side. Okay, so the tech world's mind, so that is just short for technology. Um, Yahoo, you guys familiar with the website Yahoo? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is the CEO, this is her name, Maris Meyer, and she recently beckoned, what does that mean, beckoned? She beckoned all work from home Yahoo employees back to the company offices. Anybody wait. want to make a guess? If mm -hmm. I translate she, it, it says wait. Mm -hmm. To call, it means mm -hmm. to call, call, yeah. Yeah, to call back. So, the, so apparently Yahoo had a lot of employees who were working on their computers, but they were working from home. Now she wants all of them to come back to the offices, the Yahoo company offices, so that they can work together in an office. Because she thinks that's the best place to work for communication and collaboration, which means working together. Um, and so they all need to be working side by side, so right next to each other. All right, so on the other hand, 37 Signals founder James Fried, or Freed, uh, says the office is in fact the last place workers want to be when pressed by a task demanding productivity. Efficiency, efficiency wonks are anxious to see whether Meyer's decree is a move of stupidity or one that will save Yahoo. Okay, Christoph? Yeah. On the other hand, 37 singles founder James Fritt or free says the office is in fact the last place workers want to be when pressed by a task demanding productivity efficiently war walks uh, are anxious to see whether Myers decree is a move of stupidity or one that will save you out. right Okay, so I put the, the couple of definitions for wonks up there. In this case, uh, it's kind of a funny word. Uh, so 37 Signals founder, so 37 Signals is another website, and this, this person, the guy who started it, he disagrees. He says that the office is, in fact, the last place workers want to be when they're pressed. That means when they have to do something um, by a certain time frame. Uh, they're pressed by a task demanding productivity, so something that has to get done. Efficiency wonks, so that would mean people who study efficiency. And there are people who study this and they want to see whether or not this is really going to help Yahoo. Do they think it's a stupid move or one that will save Yahoo? I don't know if you guys have read, but Yahoo is uh, becoming less and less popular these days. So mm -hmm. it used to be a very uh, large and successful company and it's on the stock market so it uh, has shareholders that are watching it <laughs> and um, so they're going to try to save it alright we'll see what happens alright the next paragraph says as we have moved into the technical and information age there has been a shift towards more office based work says Quail of globalization whatever our job title or geographical location our tools and environment are becoming similar. It is quite perverse to travel around the world to photograph inside an office that looks like it's in Croydon, UK. All right, so pretty much they look in the same. Um, Iman? Yeah. Uh, as we have moved into the technical and information age, there, there has been a shift towards more office-based work. work says well of glo globaliz uh, globalization mm -hmm. uh, whatever uh, our job letter or uh, geographical location our tools and environment are becoming similar uh, it is quiet uh, reserve reserves to travel around the world to photograph inside an office that looks uh, like it's uh, cry uh, dome Great on, great on yeah. UK. Right. 
so I just want to go over a couple words here. Um, so shift. So they're saying that it, the jobs are shifting. That means it's changing. If something shifts, it changes. And so in globalization, people have probably heard that word. It might be similar in your own language. Uh, it's a new word that talks about things uh, happening all around the globalization of everything. The economy, that means things are being built in one place, shipped to another, marketed by another company that's in a different uh, country perhaps. So rather than just working locally in your own town or your own city, uh, people are working globally all around the world. Like Verbling is uh, part of globalization. It's people working from different places all around the world. Um, so whatever our job title or geographical location, our tools and environment are becoming similar, so very much the same almost, and it's quite perverse. You guys understand that word? It means um, like strange or kind of weird to travel around to make uh, photos of all these offices when they really look basically the same as the one in his own town. Okay? But, so Quell acknowledges Quill acknowledges he is not the first photographer to look at the peculiarities of office life. Anna Fox's workstations, 1988, took a swipe at Margaret Thatcher's commerce-obsessed Britain, while Lars Chunbjörk's office, 2002, used odd moments, static partitions, and contorted workers to show us it was business as usual for office weirdness in the new millennium. Jan Banning's Bureaucratics 2007 expands the view of workspaces beyond the West and into developing nations. Banning's work is less cynical than that of Fox and Tunborg, but still shows us that no matter where you are in the world, offices and officers are unavoidable. Okay, Hazel? Yes. Can you read that, please? Yes. Uh, Quell acknowledges he is not the first photographer to look at the peculiar peculiarities of uh -huh. office life. Anna Fox Workstations, 1988, took a swipe at Margaret Thatcher's commerce obsessed Britain, while Lars Thunberg Office, 2002, used odd moments, static partitions, and comforted work to show us it was business as usual for office weirdness in the new millennium. Jan Banning's Bureaucratics 2007 expands the view of workspaces beyond the West and into developing nations. Banning's work in less cynical than that uh, Fox and Thunberg's, but still shows us that no matter where you are in the world, offices and officers are unavoidable. Mm -hmm. So a couple of words that go over peculiarities. Do you guys know what that means? Strange. A, yeah, strange things that go on <laughs> in the office life. All right, she took a swipe at. Okay, took a swipe at. That's a, an expression. Uh, what would that mean? Anna Fox's workstations took a swipe at. She took a swipe with her camera, or <laughs> no, she a took a look. Like like a check out, check out something, or come uh -huh. across. Yes, she. T it's not only to um, to look at, but it's almost kind of um, like to criticize it. So she was analyzing uh, this, and but she's taking pictures about it, and it's it's not just for like the fun of it, but also to make a statement. So when you when you take a swipe at something. A swipe, um, I'm going to show you. Okay, so um, a swipe can also be like a hit. Like you're going to hit somebody, you take a swipe and make a punch. So she's really? trying to take a swipe at them. So it was mm -hmm. kind of probably, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't look at that piece of work, but it sounds like uh, she was trying to criticize it or um, put it in, in a way where people would look at it and um, think about it. So it, Margaret Thatcher, everybody know Margaret Thatcher. She was the Prime, Prime Minister of WK. England. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she was saying commerce obsessed. So Margaret Thatcher, I think, has the reputation of, of being pretty um, pro-business pro and stuff. So she's saying that uh, they were taking a look at what was happening to uh, Britain when they made these changes in their business practices and stuff. And then this other guy, he... Uh, 
stood in odd moments, static partitions. Partitions are things that uh, that separate you, like cubicles. It's a, a, lot, a lot of times you have cubicles. That's where your office, like if you're in a big room, but in order to make it like you have a small space for yourself, they put up uh, partitions. So like there's small uh, walls that you can move around. And contorted workers. Contorted is if your body is all bent out of shape. Uh, <laughs> So, like, if you're uh, like on your computer and you're all like uh, like this or something, mm -hmm. you're that's contorted. Like you're like, contortionist. Yeah, like contortionist. Right. <laughs> yeah. So if you're like your computer's way up here and you're trying to reach for something down there and you contort your body that way, so that's what that he took pictures of people like that. <laughs> okay. So and then the other one, cynical. You guys understand what that means? Cynical. Banning's work was less cynical. Silence. Yeah, I know it's in a the same in my language. Okay, good. All right, good. Yeah, some words they have. Uh, they're like those friends, <laughs> and so they're pretty much the same. So yeah, it's like a negative thing. If you're cynical, it means you're not very hopeful. You're not looking at the bright side of things. You're um, trying to point out the the negative parts of something. Okay. Yeah. So at times, Quail was right on top of his worker subjects with precious little physical, visual, or even emotional space in the pictures. Desk job is claustrophobic. Repeated motifs such as phones, potted plants, inboxes, carpet tiles, and beige fixtures in Quell's photographs add to a uniformity of look, but also an inevitability of the office as a persistent type of workspace spanning all cultures. Okay, Juta. Mm -hmm. At times, Quail was right on top of his worker subjects, with precious little physical, visual, or even emotional space in the pictures. This job is claustrophobic. Repeated motifs such as phones, potted plants, in boxes, carpet tiles, and beige pictures in Quail's photographs add to a uniformity of look but also an inevitability of the office as a persistent type of workspace spanning all cultures. Yeah. So basically, he's just saying in this uh, paragraph that there's a lot of uniformity. That's uh, basically they all look the same across all cultures, all the offices. Similar. Yes, yeah, very similar. And it's a persistent. You guys know what that means? Persistent type of workspace. If something is persistent, it you can do keep the same thing. Uh huh. Yes. So over if, and over again. Yes. If a person is persistent, then you could say that that uh, person does the same thing over and over again. But if something like the office space uh, is persistent, it means it's the same Repeat. everywhere. Yeah, it's repeated over and over. So no matter where he went in the world, it was basically the same type of thing. Maybe you had a little bit different decorations or something, but you had the phones, you had the computers, you had your plants maybe, carpet, you know, lamp, light, something like that. What does it mean in the beginning of the paragraph, right on top? Okay, yeah, so what they're saying is right on top of his worker subject. So he was... He was the photographer. The subjects were the people that he was uh, um, taking pictures of, photographing. And so sometimes he was right on top of them. So that means maybe he was very up close, like standing right in their space, you know, because uh, maybe some of these people had very small office spaces. So maybe he was standing, like, right on top of them and putting his camera uh, right just above their from heads. Above. Or, okay. So, from yeah, above. kind of like in their – it means that – not just from above, but also like um, you're in their space, like you're like you're all it's over them. In their hair. Yeah, kind of like in their hair. Too close. Too close. Yeah. So he was mm -hmm. right on and top of them. Li yeah. Yeah. Lisa, when it says uh, work at subjects, I don't understand that subject. Yeah. Okay. So he, the subjects um, of his of his photos were the workers, right? So he's taking ah, pictures okay, okay. of the workers. So that's what they're saying. He was right on top of his 
worker subjects. They could have just said the, um, the subject, but the people, it means the right on top yeah. of the people he was taking pictures of. Photo, uh, okay. Yeah, so if we go back and we um, look at those pictures, you can see that, um, you know, some of those pictures, he was like right, right there, kind of in their face, you know. Mm -hmm. Like he was standing right there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> he wasn't far away. You know, he wasn't taking them from very far away. He was just right there. He was waiting for a moment when they would fall asleep or <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> do something. Yeah. Yeah, these are just some samples, but, uh, yeah. Wow. His chair. The chair. Yeah, the chairs are better <laughs> balls. Yeah, some people think that that's better uh, for your back. Yeah. Uh, in probably. Sweden, Maria, what, um, mm -hmm. I read... That in Sweden, it's sometimes um, popular for people to um, stand up at a desk. Yeah, yeah, a standing desk. I need a standing desk here. Yeah. That's, it's better. It's yeah. better for the body to stand up. Yes, that's what, yeah. that's what I read. They make them now. So we have them at, like, Ikea. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, good. I think people can buy them there. Okay, here we go. The employee is defined by the few cubic meters which exist around them. They must not just work, but live, eat, pray, and occasionally sleep, as if chained to the desk in perpetuity, says Quell. The fact that the global economy went into meltdown halfway through his work on desk job is not lost on Quell. For him, the photos have taken on more relevance because of the crash. Okay, uh, Maria? Okay. The employee is defined by the few cubic meters which exist around them. They must not just work, but live, eat, pray, and occasionally sleep, as if chained to the desk in perpetuity, says Quail. The fact that the global economy went into melt down halfway through his work on desk job is not lost on quail. For him, the photos have taken on more re relevance because of the crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does it mean um, the employee is defined by? Identified, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> they must stay. Yeah, that's right. Must stay. stay. If you're defined by, it, it's it's basically you must stay in in that space, but it defines you in the sense that it tells you um, what you can do there, what you can and can't do really in the space. So if you're defined by that small space, it means you can't really get up and just go do anything you want, but you're going to have to do it in that space. So you have to live, eat, pray, maybe sleep. Um, and he's he's making it here as if so that's like it's like you are chained to the desk in perpetuity. What does perpetuity mean? You guys know? Forever. Mm -hmm. Yes, forever. forever. What is it? Forever. 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 Yeah. Forever. Really. So, so that's kind of like a dramatic image that you're chained chained to your desk forever. <laughs> You can't you're ever get tight. up and go do you're something You're tied else. there forever. Yeah, you're tied to your desk. Okay. What is the verb? Is there... No, I mean the sub... Noun. Is there a noun? Perpet per Perpetuity. Yes, Yeah, change. That's... Oh, okay. So they must not just work, but live, eat, pray, and occasionally sleep as if... So that's introducing the clause there. As if... You, and then he could say as if they were... But you don't say that. You just say chained, as if chained to the desk. So the verb is chained to the desk in perpetuity. Perpetuity is a noun. Yeah. No, it's a noun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so the fact that the global commonly went into meltdown. Does, what is he referring to, the meltdown, the economic? What does that mean? Uh, the uh, crash, crash came probably. Liquid. Uh, it came so liquid crisis? from... <laughs> Yeah, um, crash. Solid state. Yeah. <laughs> right, it melted down. So if something melts, it's being uh, too hot and it's melting. Like you can melt uh, wax on a candle or plastic can melt if it gets too hot or something like that. But the, the economy crashed, so the prices fell, uh, people lost their jobs, 
uh, governments had too much debt, those kinds of things, and the banks. So that's what was they're referring to, the meltdown. The meltdown the is what happened and sometimes in the nuclear... Yes, that's uh, also a nuclear power plant. Yeah, power plant, yeah. Uh -huh. Meltdown can happen, yep. So that's what happened while he was in the middle of doing this uh, project of his. And here's a, a phrase here, it was not lost on him. So what does that mean? It, was, it wasn't lost on him. So it says, the fact that the global economy went into meltdown halfway through his work on desk job is not lost on Quail. It was not negative for him or it didn't affect him, I don't know. No. I think it's not only for good, it's also it that it's raining out for all the people. I didn't quite Sorry. hear you, Ahmad. I think it's. I I think he means that it's common not only for for club. Yeah. Okay. So what it means actually, to, if it's not lost on him, it means that he noticed it, and he realized what the significance of it. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. The or the importance of it. So it wasn't something that he didn't recognize. He was aware of it. So. If it's lost on you, like say, if uh, if somebody tells you a joke and you don't understand the joke, you don't get it, it's lost on you. That's we could say that that joke was lost on you. But if it's not lost, that means you did understand it and you understood the significance and the importance of it. It's not just something that you didn't notice, okay? So then it, mm -hmm. so that means you could say it that other way, you know, the fact that the global economy went into meltdown halfway through his work was something that he noticed or was aware of. So for him, the photos have taken on more relevance because of the crash. So it's even more relevant now that there's... So why would it be more relevant, the crash? What is he trying to uh, show with his pictures? Anybody? What are they talking about here? What is he trying to show? He showed that uh, working on an office doesn't change the meltdown. Okay. He's showing, yeah, maybe, but he's also showing that basically wherever you work in an office, it's basically the same everywhere. So everybody's experiencing the same type of thing. So if you're all working in desk jobs, and you're all relying on a certain type of economy, an economy that uses computers and, and the work that people do on computers, then if that crashes, it's going to affect everybody in the whole world, not just some people. Okay? All right, so the idea was always to talk about the relationship between the individuals and their companies, a take on globalization and corporations. Now, I think even the most hardened capitalists have to review the idea of unfettered capitalism, says Quayle, who believes some people pre-credit crunch had blind faith in the private sector's ability to check and balance. Okay, Tan, you want to read that? That's a, that's a really important paragraph there, so see if you can understand that while Tan's reading, because I'm going to ask you what it means. Ahead, the idea Tan. was always to talk about the relationship between the individuals and their companies. It take on the globalization and corporations. Now, I think even the most hardened capitalists have to review the idea of unfettered capitalism, says Kel, who believes some people pre-credit crunch had blind faith in the private sector's ability to check and balance. Yes. Okay. So it says the idea was always, so the idea for the, the book, was always to talk about the relationship between the individuals and their companies. Okay, so that's one part. He wanted to show that relationship there between people who work for different companies and the company itself and also a take on so what does that mean a take on that's a phrasal verb there a take on globalization and corporations what does it mean a take on 
I think it means something. point of view. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So he has a take. So you could say, I could ask you, uh, what what is your take on globalization? And what I'm asking you is, what do you think about globalization? So your take on something means your thoughts about it, your opinions about that particular thing. So he's presenting in his photographs his take or his opinion about globalization and corporations. Okay? So now I think even the most, most hardened capitalists have to review the idea of unfettered capitalism. So what is he saying in this sentence? Who are the hardened capitalists? What does that mean? Who is he describing? What is a hardened capitalist? Most of the, the most in capitalism. Or yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so if you are, would be, if I were to describe you as a hardened capitalist, that means that you are a capitalist until you die. <laughs> that means <laughs> you, you just believe that capitalism is the best thing and, in fact, um, it's good for everybody and the whole world and there's nothing better. Okay, so that is what that would so, mean. Yes? So if you are a hardened capitalist, you believe strongly in capitalism. Yes, right. Exactly. And um, if you're a hardened criminal, for example, <laughs> a hardened criminal is a criminal who has been a criminal for a long time. And maybe they have even been in jail quite a bit, something like that. So it's kind of like an experienced uh, person who that's what they do. They're hardened capitalist is a believer in capitalism. A hardened criminal is a criminal that's been a criminal for a long time. <laughs> and so what is the idea of unfettered capitalism? Have you guys heard that word, unfettered? Unchained, perhaps. Unregulated. Yes, unregulated, exactly. So there are some people that believe that if you let capitalism as an economic system just everybody... Um, you know, you just have a business and you try to do the best you can and if you make it, you make it and you're basically open to do whatever you want and then other people believe that capitalism should be regulated like companies should be, recu should be regulated um, in the sense of what they can make and how they can make it and how they're going to affect their communities that type of thing. So that's what he's trying to say is look at what happened in the crash uh, let's think about this a little bit, okay? So pre-credit crunch, so that was before the crash, they had blind faith. What does blind faith mean? What does that mean to have blind faith in somebody or something? They believe very strongly. You will not change your mind in on something. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Not, you, it's not just strong, but think of the word blind. What does it mean to be blind? Yeah, totally. your persistence, totally. even though perhaps you know you're wrong sometimes. Or yeah, sometimes. <laughs> exactly. So you're, you have your faith and you don't question anything, right? So you just have the blind faith. And even though you might have some examples of how it's not really true or not good, you don't care. You're turning turning the other eye, you could say, or turning the other cheek, so you're not looking at uh, the problems with, with capitalism, for example. Um, so you just have blind faith. Sometimes people have blind faith in companies. So if I have a blind faith in a company, for example, that means I don't mm -hmm. ever, I just believe that they're doing the best they can, yet they might actually be polluting or they might actually be using... Um, you know, child labor in some other country. I don't really look at that. I just believe what the company tells me. I don't do my own investigations to understand. Is it like an unnuanced view? Mm. Nuanced no. view? No, not really. It's just okay. like, yeah, to have blind faith. People have blind faith in churches, religious. in religion. Yes. They religious have blind, persons. yeah, yeah. They have blind faith in companies, in governments, in leaders. You could have blind faith in your diet. You just think it works even though you're not, you know, it's not, you're not healthy, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, and the private okay. sector. So they had blind faith, and this is what they had blind faith in. So you have blind faith in, so that's the phrase, blind faith in. 
the private sector's ability to check and balance. So who is he referring to at the private sector? Who would that be? Private sector. Companies? Yeah, companies. So we, we differentiate between the private sector and the public sector. So the private sector is businesses and, and corporations that are private, and then the public sector is the government. So presumably the government is supposed to be working for the good of the, all of the people, and oftentimes the private sector is only working for the good of the company or their shareholders people who uh, invest money in the company and get money back and so what they're saying is they had blind faith in the private sector's ability to check and balance so usually um, unless a government is regulating companies people believe that the company itself uh, will regulate itself and there's been enough evidence to for people to know at this point that that's not true <laughs> that's not necessarily true so in the United States for example we had big problems with the banks because they were not doing checks and balances on themselves they were just going crazy with money and greed and all the things they were doing okay we gotta finish up here with a quote from US Senator Elizabeth Warren in the project statement of for desk job Quill cuts right to the heart of the matter whether corporations should enjoy the same legal rights and protections as a person. Okay, so he got uh, this person, Senator Elizabeth Warren, to do uh, write a little something in the beginning of his book. And it says, it cuts right to the heart of the matter. That's a um, phrase that we use a lot. What does it mean to go straight to the heart of the matter? To cut to the problem. The, cut to the cut chase. The problem. The core, the main. Problem. Yeah, the core. Okay, good. Yeah, it's it's kind of cut to the chase would be more like get to the story that you're supposed to be telling me. Get to the good part of it. You know, get to the uh, most important part of something that you're telling somebody. But to get to the heart of the matter means to get to the most important part of um, what you're trying to get across. So it's kind of the same thing. It's a little bit different though. So. So we'll get to the heart of the matter means get to what you're trying to say. So what is it that you're trying to say? Well, what he's trying to say is uh, should corporations have the same legal rights and protections as a person, which is what they have in the United States. So um, let's see. Who's next here? Okay, Antonina. Okay, you want to read there? Mm -hmm. That one? Okay, um. great. With a quote from U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren in the project statement for desk job, Quail cuts right to the heart of the matter. Whether corporations should enjoy the same legal rights and protections as a person. Uh -huh. At the Democratic National Convention, Warren told the crowd, Corporations are not people. People have hearts, they have kids, they get jobs, they get sick, they cry. They dance, they live, they love, and they die. And that matters. That matters because we don't run this country for corporations. We run it for people. Okay, Antonio? This is a nice paragraph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. At the Democratic National Convention, Warren told the crowd, corporations are not people. People have hearts, they have kids, they get jobs, they get sick, they cry, they dance. They live, they love, and they die. And that matters. That matters because we don't run this country for corporations, we run it for people. Yeah. All right. As an English citizen, Quail has no dog in the fight of economic politics in the U.S., but the feeling that corporations have extended their power beyond reasonable boundaries bothers him. I can't help but be concerned by these increasingly large companies and their unelected CEOs with more power than presidents, seemingly accountable only to profit and their shareholder, he says. Okay, Blanca? As an English citizen, Quayle has no dog in the fight of economic politics in the U.S. 
but the feeling that corporations have extended their power beyond reasonable boundaries bothered him. I can help but be concerned by these increasingly large companies and their unelected CEOs with more power than presidents, seemingly accountable only to profit and their shareholder, he said. Mm -hmm. Good. Can Chachi? I ask you a question? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. Um, what does mean um, Quail has no dog in fight? Yeah, okay. I was going to go with that. So he has no dog in the fight. What do you think that means? Reading the whole sentence, as an English citizen, so he's not American, he's English, so that so he has no dog in the fight of economic politics in the U.S. There's nothing at stake for him. Exactly. So he is not an American citizen, so presumably the American economy and the politics around that don't have much to do with him as an English citizen, so, but he still is concerned. So even though he doesn't have a dog in the fight, so if there's a fight <laughs> and there's two dogs fighting, he doesn't have a dog, so it's not that important to him, but he does care. So that's a kind of a funny uh, expression, just to mean that even though he doesn't have a specific Personal interest, okay. yeah, like an interest, um, he still is concerned. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. All right, so this is the really important thing here is that the uh, a lot of people believe that um, these CEOs, which is true, they're unelected, so they're usually just given the job, maybe by the board of directors or something within the company, and that they often have more power than presidents, or seemingly so, and that they are only accountable, so that means they only answer to uh, profit, making money for the business, and their shareholders. So that seems to be a problem um, with these corporations. So we have a little bit more. Let's finish up before the end, and then we can talk about it a little bit. Touches of color and office flair sustain a glimmer of individuality for the subjects of Quail's photographs, but also provide blessed visual relief for us, the viewer. Ultimately, desk job is about that daily cold dance between employer and employee. Okay, Hazel? Touches of color and office flair sustain a glimmer of individuality individuality for the subjects of quail's ph photographs but also provide blessed visual relief for us the viewer ultimately this job is about the daily call dance between employer and employee mm -hmm. so a glimmer of individuality so like a little sliver of it or a little bit of uh, flair um, so they don't all look the same <laughs> but it's still um, it's still, he's describing it as a daily cold dance. So that image is not, uh, not very warm and friendly, but a cold dance. All right, the last paragraph says, Companies tend to strive for straight lines and uncluttered office spaces, whereas individuals have an urge to colonize and personalize, says Quill. In these pictures, we see the tension, but ultimately workers are intrinsic to the organizations they serve and are best placed to change them if they choose. Okay, Julissa? Companies tend to strive for straight lines and uncluttered and office spaces, whereas individuals have an urge to colonize and personalize. That's quail. In these pictures, we see the tension, but ultimately, workers are intrinsic to the organizations they serve and are best placed to change them if they choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is he saying here about this? Companies, what are companies like? Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, means like clean. Yes. So they like uh, straight lines, clean, organized, um, very, uh, oftentimes office spaces can be very, what we call sterile, not very, um, nothing in them, you know. But what, what do people like? <laughs> they they like, like to personalize their own offices with colors, pictures. Yeah, yes. yeah. like that one leaving. picture, like this lady right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's personalizing something, it's making it your own. You're personalizing your space. You're get, putting stuff in there that um, is special to you. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Maria, do you personalize your office space? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's in my home. So yeah, I guess that's really I mean, it's impossible <laughs> <laughs> not to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tan, do you have uh, stuff around your computer that makes it more just for you, like a personalized space? Tan? Where'd you go? Okay. Well, our class time is up, you guys, so hopefully this was interesting. I, I think there were some interesting uh, phrases here, and maybe it sounds like some new words. In this last sentence here, he's basically just saying that there's some tension there between the workers and the organizations, but ultimately, because the workers are intrinsic, that means they comes, they're part of the organization. Like, if you didn't have workers, you wouldn't have an organization. Um, they are the ones that can help change, the, change everything, change the office culture, and if the company wants to do that, that's where they should look, to the people who are actually working for the companies. Okay? Anybody have any questions or comments before we finish up? No, it was a very good article. A lot of exciting words and uh, yeah. <laughs> phrases. I like when there are phrases yeah. <laughs> to learn. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. Wired.com is a good uh, magazine for that because it's a good mixture between uh, more kind of formal or academic or high-level writing but using a lot of um, everyday phrases as well, a lot of colloquial uh, slang terms or, or just expressions. Yeah. Yeah. You provide a very good explanation. Okay, great. Yes, okay, guys, I thanks know. for uh, joining. I have another class tonight in about five hours, <laughs> and I have more <laughs> during the week, so if you guys want to look at my schedule, you can, but also there's other Verbling teachers that will be uh, teaching more, so if you want to continue to stay in front of your computer, <laughs> then you can. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe you want to get up and go take a walk or something. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys another time. Thanks for coming to class. Thank you, Lisa. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's Lisa again, and in this hour, we are going to be reading an article from Wired.com. Wired.com is a magazine actually it's the online version of the Wired magazine which does articles on technology and science and life and um, business culture and things like that so today I chose an article which is uh, um, going to be about a photography exhibit actually and desk jobs and things and I put the article link there but I'm actually going to be doing the reading on a, a Google Doc so I'll put that up there in just a minute Hi, Antonio. How are you doing? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Where are you from, Antonio? I'm from Italy, and this is the first time I joined uh, Verbling. Oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, how did you hear about Verbling? Um, searching in internet. <laughs> okay. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be uh, explaining how it works here in just a minute. Uh, you're in here in the reser reservation, so you get to make sure that you're here. You came in early. Um, what happens in about one minute or less is that the join class button will appear, and people can start clicking on that. And when they do, they'll, they will join us here in the Google Hangout, and we'll see all their pictures come up here below. And then we're okay. going to be doing a uh, reading. So this is um, intermediate to advanced level reading and discussion. And it looks like you like to do reading. I see a lot of books in the background there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is my room. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh, do you read in English also? Do you have books in English? Yeah, also. Okay. Uh, but I've been studying German and okay. Russian. Oh, and wow. wow in the last year and so I need to practice again with English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What um are you studying you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, even even in my job I I really depend on my computer even in my job. Uh, yeah. when I'm repairing something, I'm repairing device for example, uh -huh. there is a special kit that connect this device to the computer to make inspection of this kind of that. Oh, uh -huh. uh, and we have also the data sheet that uh, explain everything and we work on the computer every day. So my job, my office, that 
it was always like conference. If you came in the class, you, the, in the, the office, you found everyone is standing uh, or sitting in front of his computer screen and making some uh, some computer stuff. So yeah, we used to be like computer alcoholic people. Yeah, I, I it's kind of amazing. Like, what did we do before computers? Like, what kind of jobs did people have? <laughs> you know, it just uh, yeah. It was. I think it was. Uh, it, it was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, Christoph, do you spend a lot of time at a desk in front of a computer? Yes, I do. How many hours per day? Uh, uh, so it depends because uh, on the day, days week I I work in a company, so uh -huh. I'm a computer developer. So you can imagine. Oh. Yes, I see. <laughs> you, yeah. you what do you develop? Software programs or websites yeah. or? Okay. Yeah, soft, uh, software development. Okay. Blanca, how about you? What uh, Do you work at a desk? Yes, I spend about uh, eight hours a day in front of the desk, but I also do some other interesting things, so it's not boring at all. Oh, okay. Do you get up and go do something else besides working at the computer, or what? Yes. Most of the times I have to use the computer, the internet connection, but I spend time with, you know, I, I was in high school with my teenagers. So oh, uh-huh. Going with them, talk to them, and yeah. going to the cafeteria and have some coffee. I don't know. Very yeah. funny. Yeah, okay, great. And German and Russian for a certain reason or just because you enjoy it? I, I'm studying foreign languages in the, at the university. I see. Okay, okay great. Wonderful. <laughs> das ist gut. Sehr gut. <laughs> Danke. <laughs> Good. Bitte. Okay. All right. So it looks like people are coming in. I just want to say hi, everybody. Hi, Tan and Maria. Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kubra, how are you today? And Yada's in the chat. Hi, Yada. And Julissa, hi there again. Hi, Lisa. Hi. All right. And uh, Hazel, hi there, Hazel. Christoph's back, and Ant Antonina, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, great. You guys ready to do some reading? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, the, um, I don't know if you guys uh, clicked yet on the <laughs> wired link <laughs> that I put up there, but this is the pictures. So here's some some of the pictures. We can just go through it, and I'm going to put them in the screen share so that other people who are just going to listen to this uh, class will uh, be able to see. You can also open the link if you're listening. Uh, uh, Antonina, you're also learning uh, German and Russian too? Wow. You guys are um, ambitious. Huh? <laughs> That's great. I'm studying my French and my, and my Spanish. I haven't yet... Uh, well, I did join one Verbling Spanish class, uh, but I don't usually have enough time to really go in for the full class. But I sometimes watch Paulino or other Carlos or other teachers, uh, so it's pretty fun. So I think in the future, Verbling will have more languages, so it'll be a good resource for people who are learning other languages as well, not just English. Okay, so here we'll just take a look at some of these pictures. Uh, here's this guy. In, uh, what the article is about is his book that he has uh, created, and it's a book of photography. And he basically went around the world. To the office from, I start from 10 to 5 p.m. And yes, that's basically in front of the computer, uh, passing the information, yes. Yeah. Just working on, do you work on reports and things, or what kind of information do you it's work for with? A, a project. Uh, this is a nutritional project. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I'm supporting the the communication area. We are going to create some messages, like maybe we are going to make radio, radio spots. Uh huh. Adver advertisements. Yeah. For the yeah uh, for the mothers to change their habits uh, oh, okay. to give a, be a better nutrition to their kids. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. And Hazel. <clears throat> do you have a job where you sit at a desk? No, no. <laughs> what do you uh, do? 
uh, I'm a teacher, I'm a math teacher, only okay. um, at home about two, three hours. I uh -huh. um, I try not to, uh, to stay, uh, not too many hours on the computer, but usually I end up staying about two <laughs> or three hours. <laughs> yeah, especially if you do some verbling classes, huh? <laughs> yes. Time, time, we say uh, time flies when you're having Indeed. fun. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah, it goes by very quickly. That's why it's dangerous for me if I start a verbling Spanish class or something because then I won't ever get up from the computer. I'll just keep going and doing different classes and, and learning things and talking to people. <laughs> yes, indeed. Imad, how about you? How many hours a day are you spending uh, at your desk? You would better ask me how, how many times uh, I spend uh, away from my computer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how much time do you spend away from your computer? <laughs> Actually, I can't count it because it's nothing. It's maybe one or two hours a day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or just for sleeping. Do you sleep on my job, computer? Even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got on my computer and put it in under <laughs> Taking pictures of people at work um, in what we call desk jobs. Jobs where you basically sit at your desk all day and work. Um, so it might be, it looks like that lady is in her house or a bedroom. Uh, some people are in an office space. Some people are in all different kinds of um, areas. She's sitting on a ball there. <laughs> different kinds of chairs, different kinds of decorations. And um, so in the article, we're just going to read uh, what a little bit about it. Now this looks like a so anybody here in the Google chat, uh, before we start, how many people sit at their desk all day and work? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. So Maria, yes. How many hours a day do you spend working at your desk, do you think? At least eight. <laughs> wow, at least eight. Do you look like that sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> Falling <Exactly. Long> asleep. <laughs> but I know I don't take a nap. <laughs> don't take a nap. Okay. No. All right. Good. Tan, how many hours do you spend at the computer a day? I don't know. One, two, four. Mm. Take a guess. Uh, from three to four hours. Three to four. Yep. Julissa, how about you? Do you? What kind of a job do you have? Do you have a desk job? Yes, well now this is part of my practice or internship. Uh -huh. and, but yes, for, we have some periods. For example, uh, I have some times that I have to work in the office. But for example, the, the past week I had to travel to the, to the jungle to do the research, to get some information. So oh. that was, yeah, that was very interesting. And that's what I like, to be outside, getting information, information from the people. Uh, yeah. making interviews or focus groups and oh. yes that is outside the, the office but tomorrow I have to go again 